I did, but now that we're recording. Okay, uh, <laughs> somebody pick a question from the homework last night. I think I'll go with the one who thought about it. What page was that, Michelle? Um, 278. I had it on the right page. Okay, 278, number 42. Yes. So number 42 says cosine of t equals 4 fifths. And what they wanted you to find was cosine of pi minus t. Am I reading this correctly? And and cosine of t plus pi. Now I realize that I sometimes want to do things the long way, but I honestly have to draw the unit circle on just about every one of these. So, and I apologize for the quality of my circle here. You want my CD? <laughs> I'm going to try and draw it a little bigger. Too bad you don't have an old vinyl album from the 80s. Um, I think a CD will be too small. Let's see. So, there's the track. Yeah, I know that. You need one of the, like, circle drawing things. Compass. It's actually called a compass. It's the original name for one. I don't know how the name compass got used for one of those circle drawing things. Doesn't this book have one? Yeah, but... Wait, you guys know what a compass is? Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, or there's the safety one. Okay, if the cosine of t... Yeah. If the cosine of t is 4 fifths, remember cosine on the unit circle is your x value. So which 4 fifths is a decimal, it's about 0 0.8, it's exactly 0 0.8. So that means if we go 4 fifths of the way out along the x-axis, that's our adjacent side. Wait, so tangent to x? Uh, cosine. cosine. x equals cosine of any angle. y is the sine of any angle on the unit circle. Okay, so for this one, that means t is this angle here. And like we talked about yesterday, we can draw a bow tie. And we can figure out the sines and cosines of four other angles. If this is t, this one here is going to be pi minus t. And these are supposed to be congruent because my circle is so bad they don't look like it. Because if you go out to pi, 180 degrees, and then back up t degrees, you'll get the same size angle here. If you go 180 degrees and then go t degrees further, negative t. Uh, negative t is over here. Here you get pi <laughs> plus t. If you start here and go the same number of degrees down, Saul, here's where you get negative t. All right. Now I don't know. <laughs> so this is going to be the point four fifths comma some y I don't care about. Okay, you could find it, but that's not in this chapter. Over here is going to be negative 4 fifths positive y. Down here is going to be negative 4 fifths negative y. And over here is going to be positive 4 fifths negative y. The point is, if you know the cosine of this angle, then you know the cosine of this angle, this angle, and this angle. So looking at this unit circle I've drawn with my rather ugly bow tie in the middle, um, if the cosine of t is 4 fifths, what is the cosine of pi minus t? Cosine of pi minus t would be negative 4 fifths negative y. Cosine is always the x value. It would be negative 4 fifths. Negative 4 fifths. <coughs> because pi minus t is all, as long as t is between 0 and 90, Pi minus t is always going to be the one in quadrant 2. So that's always going to be where x is negative. We don't have to care where, what t equals. We know this about it. Oh, so you just you know, memorize the quadrants based on the every time? And you, don't, and you don't have to draw this circle both times. You just memorize it, right? Correct. Um, and again, like we discussed before, I'm lousy at memorizing, so I always have to draw it. The only trick to that solve is you always have to know that pi minus, well, actually, that's not hard to memorize either. Let's finish answering the question, then I'll give you a hint on that. Right. Um, so what is going to be the cosine of t plus pi? Negative, or no, yeah, negative 4 fifths. Yeah, it's also going to be negative 4 fifths. Um, that doesn't really answer the question 100%. Pardon? That doesn't really answer the question. kind of like his new going around yeah. question, but giving you somewhat of an answer. Because 
not giving you the exact answer. It's giving you the answer and showing you not only need the answer, but it's giving you kind of the answer. It's actually giving you the exact answer of what this is. It's just weird to find it without knowing what t is. Well, isn't it saying it's giving you, it's like giving you half the answer, right? Well, it depends on what you need to know. you got to remember, back in the day when people were doing this math, people of you were building temples. And people were using this to build temples, to build churches, to build ships, to build cannons, all before they had calculators or even tables. So if you learn things like this, then... Um, it was actually really handy to know exactly what. If you knew the, sometimes it was so much oh. easier to not care what the angle was. Okay, so it's basically like saying like, okay, I know this is five, and I know it's x, and x doesn't really matter what x is because it's gonna, it's automatically gonna be like it's gonna, well, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be like it support five. So yes. It so you don't even care what t is, and that's an attitude about math that was very prevalent back in the days before we had a calculator. Now, obviously, if I tell you the cosine t of four fifths, we'll get to this after break. You're going to pull out your calculator, and you're going to go cosine inverse of 4 fifths equals t. Your calculator will tell you this, and then you're going to use that information to answer any other questions. But this is a different way of thinking about it. And the advantage thing about it this way is it forces you to really understand the concept. But, um, and it also, if you're ever trapped on a desert island and you have to build a temple without a calculator, this stuff, this way of thinking will come in handy. Um, yes, yeah, because I'm going to... <laughs> That's the first thing I'm going to do. Depends when you're trapped on a desert. You're not going to look for shelter. You're not going to look for food. You're not going to try and practice starting fires. You're going to build a temple. I'm going to go to the bathroom for about five minutes. Can you please make sure they don't do anything like that? Yes. Can you see number 36? Yes. We're doing number 36 now, which is a different type of question. Um, yeah. Incidentally, Saul asked this question, but uh, he'll be disappointed he missed the answer. Real quick on this one, if you don't want to draw the bow tie on a question like this, okay, if the angle T is in quadrant 1, the angle T is in quadrant 1, then pi minus T is always going to be in quadrant 2, pi plus T is always going to be in quadrant 3, and negative T will always be in quadrant 4. I honestly find it easier to draw the unit circle than to think about it, but this may be a hint, another way to look at a problem like this. Okay? If t is in quadrant 1, pi minus t is always going to be in quadrant 2, pi plus t will always be in quadrant 3, and negative t will always be in quadrant 4, and you use what quadrant it's in to figure out if the sine or cosine is positive or negative based on cosine being x, sine being y. And now number 36. So, Layla, do me a favor, follow the camera over to this board and read to me what 36 says. Um, evaluate the trigonome trigonometric function using its period as an aid. Cosine of negative 8 pi over 3. Negative 8 pi over 3. Negative 8 pi, it's going backwards. Okay. Um... Negative 8 pi over 3 is how many times around the unit circle? What? 4. 4? Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. 2 is what? once around. Well, four 2 pi is, is once around. 2 pi is once around. Okay. 4 pi is twice around. around. Well, you guys are just looking at the it's top. Not, it's not. It's less than that. It's less than that. Okay. Make 2 pi. Hey, guys, make 2 pi into a fraction over 3. Oh, wait a minute. This is going to be 6 pi over 3. It's only once around. Yep, so 6 pi over 3 is once around. One and a half. No. So this is negative 6 pi over 3. Well, not plus, minus in this case. Minus another 2 pi over 3. You see how I can write 8 pi over 3 as these two equivalent fractions? Uh, and yeah. this one plus is once yeah. around. Now, so what we're going to do... So are you just finding points that you like, kind of know on the unit circle, like we know there's a 6 pi over 3? Well, we know 6 pi over 3 is one whole time around. Right. So since this is negative, this is 6 pi over 3. And then it keeps going 2 more pi over 3. Now, how many degrees is 2 pi over 3? I thought 2 pi was 1. 2 pi is once around. 